everybody. Hey. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Knits and Pieces, to our Knit Chat Cafe. Um, yeah, the place we meet every Tuesday so that we can just get together with all of our friends and and share and just have a good time. And we're glad that you're all here. <laughs> you seem like you're at a loss for words, and that's rare. No, it is rare. It is rare. I don't know. I think I was looking at something and I got distracted. <laughs> but anyways, we are so glad that you are all here. Um, we look forward to Tuesday nights. Uh, you know, we never, never really know what direction the podcast is going to take. We usually have some ideas to get started, but we're glad that you continue to come and support us every week. And, you know, who knows, what would we do someday if we tuned in here and no one was here? <laughs> I guess we, just uh, well, we would just other. we would just spend an hour and knit together for sure that wouldn't be a problem not at all so anyway so. anyway but um my name is noelle <laughs> i did remember that <laughs> i'm kelly and together we are knits and pieces we are a mostly knitting podcast but we do lots of other things as well and uh, tuesday night is our informal session where we mm -hmm. just gather together with our friends here in the knit chat cafe and talk about what we what we've worked on this week maybe what you've worked on this week and just sort of see where the conversation is going to take us from there yeah it was looking through it looks like there's lots of projects going on so we did have like um, a Tulsa tea it looked like there was quite a few people doing the Burmy basic 18 or not 18 28 which mm -hmm. I'll have to show you later on that I finally got it on the needles but um yeah, it's nice to see what everybody's working on. And, you know, now that at least in the northern hemisphere, we're getting into a little bit nicer weather. And yes. I'm still knitting some woolly things, but I really want to, now I really want to knit all the summer knits. And I usually don't have that feeling very often, but I'm really, really enjoying knitting with the coast. And I just want to knit everything in it. So I know we're stuck. We're stuck on the coast. We're both in that mode, though. And, uh, yeah. Tonight, we are not color coordinated, but we are designer coordinated because we are both wearing sweaters by Beth McDonald Stone. Yep. Yes, we and we'll go into that, what we're wearing uh, in just a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, um, well, I just want to say I want to thank everybody for the support that they showed Nancy last week and reading through the comments. It's absolutely unbelievable how many people are touched by this disease mm -hmm. and anything that we can do to kind of bring awareness to it, to um, encourage research in it. Um, I thank the people that let us know for sharing, like um, we're sending out healing vibes to you and hope that all goes well with your, your treatments. And um, yeah, it's, it's, and we are, I guess if, if you didn't join us last week, we are talking about breast cancer. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the disease Noelle's referring to. Yes. And we had yes. Nancy Wheeler, uh, who is Knit Sip Happy on Instagram mm -hmm. and on her podcast. And she was on the show last week. And she is she was doing a fundraiser. Uh, she designed a pattern, a sock pattern. And uh, she was selling, selling the sock pattern. And all proceeds from the sock pattern for the first week went to uh, breast cancer. And she just released yesterday what all of her donations totaled up to from pattern purchases and there were yarn purchases that were um, tagged in there as well from yarn indulgences had dyed a specific color and uh, where else Noel? Oh, I had, believe there was, there was at the little, at the um, fiber festival they had, that they had, they yes. had fiber festival in New Brunswick that there was also um, a, I think they make bags and things, but I think it was top sale canvas. And I think they designed yes. a little pouch. And I do believe there were some other makers that were um, a little bit involved in it. So our thanks to everybody that mm -hmm. participated in it. And it was it was amazing. I think Nancy um, had texted me a little bit earlier and said like her final total of everybody was actually 4,200. Yes, so which is amazing. amazing. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah. Um, and then just a couple of other points that I wanted to touch on. We did talk a, a little bit about, you know, like how much self-awareness, not, well, yeah, being aware and like, you know, we do have to advocate for our own health. And we talked a lot mm -hmm. about mammograms. Now, someone had asked um, at what age, and I, I actually don't, I don't know, we're not medical professionals. 
like I'm at the age now where I am getting it fairly regularly through a breast screening program in Ontario. Um, I don't know in other cases, but one important um, aspect of it that someone brought to our attention last week is a reminder that women should be doing a monthly self exam. And if you do find anything, you should be contacting your healthcare provider. And then even if you're not in that age group, most likely they would set you up with a mammogram to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want, you know, people to be aware of that. So even if you're not at the age in your life where you're getting them regularly, you really should be doing the, the self breast exams. And then yeah. one other thing that someone brought to my attention that I, I did not know, there's actually like another type of cancer called Paget's disease, which is actually, um, it's cancer of the nipple. And a lot of times um, this particular viewer told us that will be overlooked because they tend to think it might be eczema or something. So, you know, you get on a waiting list to see someone for eczema that's seven months down the road, but actually, oh, okay. to, uh, so, you know, that's something to be aware of too. And then, you know, maybe if you do have something like that, push to be sent to the right professional to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes. But anyway, we, again, we, uh, we want to thank everybody for their support. Um, we really enjoyed having Nancy on last week and, <laughs> The patterns were, um, I'll show you a little bit later. I did finish my, my tits up socks. So <laughs> not sure I want to tell my boys what they're called, but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, again, it was, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was nice to hear that the fundraising went so well. So, yes. And we're looking forward to what Nancy's going to come up with for next year because she yeah. has already said that she will do this again next year. So we will be here and ready to knit whatever you come up with, Nancy, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. And and on that theme, Nancy was um, generous enough that she put together a little package of patterns for someone that maybe watched the podcast after or, um, you know, you went back in after and put in a comment, we asked you to go to her website and take a look at her patterns and see what you like. So I did that draw just like, basically just about 20 minutes ago is probably why I'm so frazzled thinking, <laughs> I gotta do this and I gotta do this. So anyways, okay, I'll pull it up. minutes ago, and we did pick a winner. Okay. So our congratulations, winner is... our winner was Joan Mather. And Joan said that she has the Freddie Beach socks in her queue and good luck to Nancy with her sock class. And that was another thing. Nancy did teach a sock class this past weekend at the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. And she said it went really well. So we're trying to encourage her to do an online version. Um, but Joan says a teacher with passion usually makes for a great class. And I agree with that. If someone's passionate about about what they are interested in and what they love it's easier to pass that on to other people that's so. a great comment that's yeah. a great comment yeah so and i know that i've seen Joan. yes and i've seen joan's name yes. in here for a long time she's a yeah. uh, a, a loyal knit chatter for sure yeah. we've seen her lots of times in the cafe and i'm pretty sure that she is a i think she's won something she's a, Point. I think she's one, but I think she enters a lot of socks in her yes. year long sock long. I yeah. see her name in there a lot too. So yeah. congratulations, Joan. We've got five more patterns coming at you. Uh, and I just one second here. Let me grab this. If you can just reach out to us at knits and pieces podcast at gmail.com after the show. And uh, we will how are we doing that, no Noel? Were we Well, if they if they reach out to me, then I will I will actually forward it on to forward Nancy that on to Nancy. Email. Yes. Yeah. So Okay. Okay. So um going back to last week, there was actually just a couple of questions that I had. I did kind of skim through I did go through all the comments, but I forgot to write anything down. I don't think there was a lot of questions in the actual comments. We were mostly talking about the stock patterns. Yes, but I did have a couple of other comments and one was like we have said last week, we talked about double dipping and that, you know, double dipping wasn't, you know, dip in the dip again, but double dipping was if you're, you're doing a project for a knit along, could you um, enter another knit alongs? And we said, enter in as many as you want. And someone did point out, and I have had this happen to me that sometimes if you go in to put the exact same post into a bunch of different threads on Ravelry, it will tag it because they think it's spam. So all you need to do is if you are doing it in several different posts, either just change up the picture or change up your wording and what you write, and then you should it shouldn't give you that error message. So that was just because I know I've had that happen to me if I've gone through and I'm putting something 
you know, in three or four different ones and you're just kind of repo reposting the same thing, it will say, oh, uh, you posted this already. <laughs> that's right. Yes. And we have so, had questions on that too. So that's, yes. that's good to come up with that. Yes. Yeah. And then the only other question that I had was I had a, a, an email from um, someone who was working on a sweater, hand dyed yarn, they did not alternate skeins. And now when they're down at the bottom, they can see the variation in mm. the skeins as they're joining it in. And they wondered if there was anything that they could do other than rip back and alternate and wondered whether or not blocking, maybe some of the excess dye would fill in those spots. I, I've never had that happen. Well, I, I, I usually, okay. I usually, I may not always swatch, <laughs> but I usually always alternate. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, you, I mean, I guess the thing is you could try it because you're not hurting anything, even if you have to rip back and do it again, mm -hmm. like you could try it. I'm thinking that the, like I have a couple of times in the past and that's why I do it all the time. I have in the past had to go back and rip out because I didn't, this was kind of when I was new to using hand dyed yarns. And now, even if they look close, when I look at them, I just don't take the chance. So I don't know if anybody in here has any other experience with that, but I'm thinking you're going to have to at least go back a ways on that. Yeah, I was going to say, you may not have to go. I mean, I don't think you'd have to take out the whole sweater, but I think if you went up a couple or a few inches from yep. where that join is, and then you start alternating, I think that would blend enough that it would, the eye may not be as visible. So and I had, I had that experience once um, in a sweater that I made where I ran out of yarn and I had to get another skein and I couldn't get the same dye lot. And rather than take the sweater out, I thought, well, it'll be okay. It wasn't okay. It, mm -hmm. it really wasn't okay. So I ended up going back and taking the sleeves out and at least alternating on the sleeves. But even on that, it was such a drastic difference that it almost yeah. looks like a micro, micro striped the sleeves. Yeah. But um at least that seemed, I mean, I could live with that, live with that. Yeah. Um, Victoria says, what about over dyeing the yarn? Um, you could do that. I know that, I know that people on... have done that in the past though, but if the difference is significant, oftentimes you're still going to see that variation once you over dye it. I know I, I have never over dyed a sweater, but I know I've seen comments from people on different podcasts or different dyers that have done that. And depending on how dark you're going or what you're doing, sometimes you are still going to see that variation. It's going to just be different shades of a different color. Mm -hmm. So, or maybe if you go dark enough, I don't know. I, I, I would probably, if it was me, I would probably rip back and alternate. Yeah. But yeah, I think I would too. So anyway, and Wendy says, what about knitting from the inside and outside? Um, if you're, if your total skeins are different and you, you're using more than, than one skein in the project, I would probably alternate the skeins. I know mm -hmm. that I have had variations in a skein of sock yarn that's different from the beginning of the skein to the end of the skein. Mm -hmm. And I have done that method then when I, where I actually alternate from the beginning of the skein and the end of the skein by pulling from the middle of the cake and the outside of the cake. It's kind of a pain, but you end up with a, an overall much more e even distribution of the color in the hand dyed yarn. Yes. So, yeah. But. Okay. So should we move on? <laughs> should we actually talk about knitting? We should. <laughs> Although I've seen a few comments in here tonight about our hair. People are commenting, I'm back in curls tonight and now your hair is straight. Oh, straight. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I was commenting to Noelle just before the show started how long her hair is. I'm not it, used it, to seeing it straightened it out. It's, it's like, it's I know. Very and long. Even even it, when I'm not used to it and I don't have it down that often because it gets caught <laughs> when I'm knitting, it gets caught in everything. But I worked out last night when we had Penelope over yesterday. So I worked out after she was gone and I had washed my hair and I thought, I don't feel like I wasn't just even too tired just to put the two minute curler thing. In. <laughs> so, I'm like, I'll deal with it tomorrow. So I just straightened it today. So yeah, anyway. Yes, okay. I stopped by Noelle's house yesterday, so I got to spend a little time with Penelope too. She's so cute. She's she absolutely so cute. adorable. And she's just she's like just starting to like say so many words now, and just yes. we, had, we had a really good time with her. So yes, but she's you know, speaking there's... really clearly too. I could understand mm -hmm. everything she was saying. So yeah, very good. So it was fun. Okay, so okay. do we want to move into what we're wearing? Sure. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You can go first. Okay. I am wearing 
the mid ocean tea by Beth McDonald Stone. And I wore it tonight because the pattern was released last week, but after Nitcha. <laughs> so, yes. Cause I yes. think it was released maybe on Wednesday. So yes. this is, um, a pattern that Beth originally did in Antigone, which is a 100% linen yarn by Derrera Natura. Um, I didn't have any of that, but I did have Holstgarn Coast. So mine is done in Holstgarn Coast holding two strands together. So here's a picture so you can kind of see it's, um, it, it's long enough that it comes over the top of my jeans. So the jeans don't even have to be high waisted. And the sleeves, I think I did mine a little bit shorter than what she did hers. And I did a couple of decreases just so they would come in a little. I just didn't want the, I didn't want them quite as loose as what thus were. And the only other thing different that I did than the pattern was I trimmed the neck edge and the armhole edge or the sleeve edge with a different color. So these are both colors of coast. The trim, the purpley trim color is plum. And the color of the main sweater is saffron, which is a, a cone that Kelly and I shared. And she's still got enough left to do a sweater. And I've already done two sweaters with it. So yes. that's how far a cone of coast goes. Yeah, and you've held so that then, double too. So this is, yes, this is held double. Um, so this, so held double, the coast was giving me about, um, on the needles I started off with was a four millimeter. And I switched, I think, after the yoke to a three point seven, five, and it's about 21, 22 stitches. So, and I, I love the fabric that it makes. I've not had any trouble with the coast shrinking. It seems to stay roughly the same size. It might, this one kind of spread out a little because of the lace in the pattern. Mm -hmm. um, but the coast kind of fills in a bit, not as much as the super soft, but it fills in a bit when you block it. The blend of fibers is 45% cotton and 55% lamb's wool. So even though it's got that wool in it, like I still feel like it, it feels like the, a good fabric for like spring summer knits. I mean, in the middle of summer when it's like 40 degree, uh, whatever you call it, humid X, I'm not going to be wearing, I'm probably going to be wearing a t-shirt or a bathing yes, suit, but, yes. um, but it's perfect for, for spring. So mm -hmm. I, I, I can easily see, I always say this though, but I could really see doing another one. <laughs> so I finished so mine might. this week too, and I'm going to show it a little bit later. Uh, but we also had a viewer that switched up and she, she did, or she, she did the, uh, okay, Kelly, what are you trying <laughs> to say? She, Isabel did the test knit as well oh, for yes. the mid ocean tea. And she did the back of her. She didn't mm -hmm. fill in, in the pattern. She knit the pattern or just stuck a net on the back, but she did do a little, like a little triangle up at the yes. top. And I really like really that cute. too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was just saying to Kelly, I would actually like to do one of these in a long sleeve version for like, you know, kind of a sweater for summer evening when it's, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I have a charcoal gray, which I thought would look really nice trimmed with a really nice little pink up here. It would, it would <laughs> so, look really good. And I thought that would be nice to do with maybe just the design on the front and just do the back plane and put that little tiny um, diamond just up at the back of the neck. Yes, very nice. Yeah. I so. like that. Okay, and I am also wearing a sweater designed by Beth McDonald Stone, and this is the uh, Deep Dean, and I've got a picture yeah, there. there. So I knit this one in um, the Estelle Eco Tweed DK, which is a really good yarn, in my opinion, for a sweater like this. It's very mm -hmm. lightweight. It has um, it has naps in it so it's as i said it's a tweed but the naps are really well integrated and on saturday when we were at the coffee shop we got talking about naps and yarn that naps that can look like they need to come off which i would be plucking off as i knit i yeah. know they're not supposed to come off but that's that's just me so <laughs> i think it was vanda i came up with the term and this is a good one she called me a net picker <laughs> not a net picker i'm a net picker so um anyway I like a uh, tweed that is very well integrated into the fabric of the yarn. And this one ticks those boxes. The sweater I love because it's kind of like a sampler sweater. It's got um, patterning like all the way down. And so I was never, ever bored, ever bored. <laughs> it just felt like I was knitting a different sweater all the way along. And yeah. um, 
I guess the only part that's stocking out would be the sleeves. And I did three quarter sleeves and I have a little bit of a looser um, cuff mm -hmm. on there that I like too. So I've got a few things that I can wear underneath it. I've got some three quarter sleeve shirts. This one is, I've also got like a short sleeve denim shirt, which was in the picture, things like that, that I like to wear. And I never feel overheated because I'm trying to remember what the, I can't remember what the composition of, I know I have some, but I haven't knit with it yet. But. I'm pretty sure there's, there's cotton in here, right? Um, is there silk? I just forget, but I know that there's cotton. So to me, yeah, anytime remember. there's cotton, I know there's alpaca. I know there's some alpaca in it. Is there alpaca? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. there is. I don't okay. know. We're guessing. <laughs> Somebody will probably what hop on good, here in about it? 30 seconds and let us know. But anyway, it, it, it is a very comfortable yarn to wear. Mm -hmm. um, it, I don't, like I said, I don't feel like I'm overheating in it, but it adds an extra layer of warmth or when I don't, excuse me, when I don't want to be that warm, we are off our game tonight. We are, we yeah, are all over the place. Got it. Got it. Um, is Mercury in a retrograde? That's what I'm starting to wonder. Are we in a retrograde? Anyway. Um, so yeah, it's just a sweater that I love. And uh, she released this one just a couple of months ago. So it's still yeah. a relatively new pattern. She had a really good group of test knitters. Um, I did not get mine done in time for the test. I was a late start and Beth was okay with that. Thank you, Beth. And, but I love, absolutely love, love, love the sweater and I yeah. wear it a lot. I actually wear this one a lot. So yeah. Okay. Just looking to see if anybody. Oh, here we go. Oh, Thank there you. Go. Yeah. There it is. I knew somebody would say this. I thought it had alpaca. Yeah, fifty percent. Oh, so there's no cotton. I don't listen to me. That's fifty percent wool, twenty five percent alpaca, and then twenty five percent lyocell, which I think the lyocell is that a plant fiber? fiber. I think it is. Okay. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because yours feels. Yours feels not quite as warm as mine. Like mine is um, alpaca merino and I think a little bit of silk, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a warm, like I feel it's a warm sweater when I have it on. Yeah. So like and mine Elaine, got to the point where it's actually too warm for this time of year. Yeah. Elaine is saying that she feels that the Estelle Eco tweed yeah. feels very similar to the Rowan felted tweed. And I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. This one maybe feels a little more rustic than the Rowan, maybe just a little bit. But honestly, I mean, if I can wear it, we know it's yeah. not that rustic because we just know. We know. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, did you have any finishes this week? I did. I had one. I have How one. How many do you have? Just one. Oh, this would have been my opportunity <laughs> if I had just like pushed through to get two. This would have been my chance. But no, I have one. You go ahead. Okay. You start it with the sweater. Okay. So I, my finish is my tits up socks. So I finished my tits up socks by Nancy Wheeler. Here we go. Both done. They look great. Really, really enjoyed them. It was a fun knit. And then, and the pattern was so easy to memorize. And I've got a couple of pictures just so it's easier to see what they look like. So um, the main pattern just goes down the front of the sock, but you've got a little bit of detail just with a couple of rows of your contrasting color at the start. And then before you start into the body of the sock and then your heel is a, um, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. But if you look closely at the heel pattern there, she's got that little garter ridge on the side of each heel, which makes it super easy. I just found I could just run my needle through and pick up those stitches for the, the gusset and super easy to do that. And then I just then a little tiny touch of the contrast color before you start into the toe decreases. So this, the yarn that I use, the main yarn is um sweet georgia yarns tough love sock which like i i haven't used it that much i've used it a couple of times i love this yarn it's that's a sweet so georgia nice yarn the speckles yes. speckles yes. i didn't realize yes. that that sweet looks great georgia tough love sock and the color is called rose day and then the heel flap and the little trim the pops of color are life in the long grass twist sock and the color is called Jezebel. And I mean, this is the third project that I put this into because I think I did, I did it as color work in a sock. 
I used it in color work in a, in my um, Novelli sweater. And then I still used it in this and I still have 10 grams left. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just the yarn that keeps on giving. But I love the colors together. And this is actually the first pair, new pair of socks that I've knit for myself in a while. Mm -hmm. So happy to have a new pair now that it's almost getting too warm to wear them. Yes. <laughs> but they'll be they'll be tucked away and they'll be all ready for the start of next year. So great pattern. If you haven't um, checked it or tried it out, like I said, it was a fun knit. It was easy. It was one of those ones that I could take with me to the coffee shop because the pattern was super easy to remember mm -hmm. and I could knit and talk at the same time. So. Okay. And I didn't finish mine, but since you're talking about them and we were talking about Nancy's okay. pattern, I'll just show this one again for anybody that wasn't here last week. This is the first one finished. I've got the second one on needles though. And this is the Titty Gaga sock. Yeah, just so you can good. see how amazing that pattern is. And again, very memorizable. Yeah. Uh, and this one was using the Rose Hill yarns in the Chickadee Trail. But I, and it's got the little design up the back as well. I really like this sock. It's a good fit. And uh, like I said, I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun knitting on it as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. I love that, that sock yarn too. And I have that pattern, so I will get that cast on, but I have, I have some Lord of the Rings socks to do first. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. And Haley says here, Jezebel with tits up. And I thought, I know, right? <laughs> how, that, how that pairing went together. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. So I'll show my finish. Um, I finished the mid-ocean tea that noelle is wearing <laughs> i finished mine and i did so finish good. it at the beginning of last week so we can't really uh, i'm not that far behind the release date i think i finished it the day after she released it so um, that looks so good i love this color i, I do have a couple of pictures here whoops wrong one um okay so we had a hard time finding a good place for pictures on the weekend and I definitely wanted to get some pictures in it. So, but I really, really love this, this yarn. Mm -hmm. And I specifically, when I made this sweater, I was thinking of this dress, which is a, it's just like a denim chambray dress that I have in my wardrobe that I knew I wanted to wear this. So I knit the sweater in a crop and um, I did the pattern on both sides of the sweater too, the way it was written. But um I just love everything about it. I, I love that dime. The diamond patterns were so fun to do. I know. <laughs> and I didn't want the sweater to end. And I, when I was making it, I have to say, I was thinking, like it almost looked like just the way this this went. It looks like, oh, how is that going to sit on my arm? The way it's going straight out. But you know what? When you have it on, I it don't... actually sits really well. I don't think I made mine quite as long as yours. I made the sleeves a little bit shorter. But I'm really happy with the outcome. And the yarn that I used was Coast as well. But I held mine with Titty Kaka. And I used the Coast in Thistle Down, which is such a pretty, such a pretty color. It bluey is. purple. And then the uh, Titty Kaka is Lupine, which has a lot more um, purple than blue in it. So together, I think they were, um, this is this is what Holst suggests to be the good the match. Pair, the perfect pair. The perfect <laughs> pair. And they do stress that it will not be perfectly matched colors, but the colors will be very complementary. And I have to agree, they definitely got it right in the sweater because I couldn't mm -hmm. love this, this mm -hmm. colorway more. And this, again, it was really super efficient. I made the size two in this sweater and um, I used 1.4 skeins. So they come in the little 50 gram Cakes, cakes i guess and i used um 70 grams in each colorway because when you use coast and the titty kaka the yardage is almost bang on um between the two two products so i used um just under one and a half for each 70 grams each so it's a very lightweight sweater at 140 grams so you definitely can wear this out in the warmer weather and i really i'm really happy with it yep. it's it's pretty. It, and it was really, um, once I got first past that first set of um, the diamond, diamond. repeats, it mm -hmm. becomes very intuitive, the pattern. Yeah. And although it looks, you know, 
really tricky. Like this looks like tricky lace to me. This looks like something I'd look at and go, oh, that's a lot of lace. But you know what? It was really quite intuitive. And, yeah. And you can and, almost, it's it's kind of easy to read it when you get to where yes. you know that the yarn overs have to be. And, and so I like, really it, like and, the raglan too, the way yes. it's yeah, it's really nice. Very nice. I mean, it's such a nice fitting sweater. Like I could see doing it just with the, the raglans and having it all plain. But yes. then just having this little bit of detail in your eyelets would make a really cute sweater too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm I'm another one that I would love to do again, <laughs> but it's just a matter of time. Okay. Well, I struggle to get any of them done the first time around. And as much as I would love to do them again, I don't know that sometimes the same sweater is not in, in I just my, said I would like to, I, didn't I would say like I would, to I would yes. happen. <laughs> Let's just say, um, given an unlimited amount of time, it is a sweater. I would not hesitate to do it again. Exactly. I, I had that much that's, fun with it. That's I didn't the trick, really want that, it that unlimited amount of time. Yes. Just we, too bad we couldn't we couldn't uh, stash time the way we could stash yard. <laughs> no, I know, no. I know. All right. Okay. So, do you have anything on your needles? Oh, I have lots of things on needles. Okay. Um, Are you working on any of them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've got. Uh, what do I have? I've got one, two, three. Three to talk. Well, two. No, real. No, three. Three to talk about. I guess. Okay. I have. How many do you have? Okay, then you better start. <laughs> That's because I, I need to get some of them done. <laughs> okay. So, um, first of all, is my Lord of the Rings socks, which That's I am code on for next week will be November. a big finish week for Noel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, I am working on my Lord of the Rings socks. So the first ones are my are the ones i'm working on right now are my gandalf socks and this is a pattern by claire ellen and these are where we are Ooh, i like I, that i really really like this pattern really like it so this is um barocco vintage sock uh the colors i believe that the color is called smoke and this is just um a 50 gram skein of 75 25 sock yarn that I had that I don't even have the bulb in for anymore. So I don't know what color, well, it's cream, but I don't know what the actual color was. But I decided because, you know, Gandalf the Gray starts off as Gandalf the Gray, but then it becomes Gandalf the White that we should, you know, incorporate some white Both into colors. this pattern. Very so I clever. got to the point that in the pattern, I did do some modifications because the pattern comes down to here and then it actually takes this, all this cable design right down into the heel of the sock. And then it does, that'll be your, like your heel flap. And then you do the heel turn and you've got the gusset. I didn't want that. This is, this is a lot of cables here, right? Because this sock is 88 stitches as opposed to 72 I, that I would normally do for one of the guy's socks. So, I feel like you might feel that on your heel. I'm exactly. That, yeah. I'm with so you So that's that. why I, I thought that's going to be too much to go into the shoe of a sock. So I'm just going to do an afterthought heel. And I picked out, I had several different colors of cream. So I, I asked Ross, you know, well, which one, which ones do you think would be the best? So of course now he says he he made part of the pattern. <laughs> he told me which one was the best. There we go. So once I got once I got um so much past, I marked where I was gonna put the heel. Once I got so much past it, I decided I would do the heel because I wanted to see what it looked like. And I did, it's just a like an afterthought heel. But because we were talking about last week how you know, we normally do our afterthought heels and we do got like kind of like the wedge. But then when Nancy was talking, we were talking about how, well, no, your heel's not really shaped like that. So I did a rounded heel. There you go. So, and I, I mean, I don't know what it fits like because it doesn't fit me, but it, I really like how it looks. And I yeah. do like, it does it like look like, like, a heel like shape. the shape of what your heel should be. So another thing that I did when I got down before I started doing that, when I got down to here, before I placed my markers, I decreased the, I had 44 stitches across each half of the sock. Mm -hmm. So I decreased that to 36 is because that's the amount that I would normally do for one of the guy's socks in the heel. And the heel didn't need to be any bigger because it doesn't have all this cables in it. So, and then the foot of my sock, it didn't do that in the pattern either. The foot of my stock is still only going to be the 36 stitches. It's not going to be okay. the 44 across. And then when I get to the toe, I'm going to do the toe in the the cream color and I, I I really like them yes yeah 
And these ones are, believe it or not, these are actually the least detailed of the ones that I'm doing so far. So they actually, there's actually like seven rows out of a 24 row pattern where all you do is knit the knits and purl the pearls. Easy. <laughs> I think, you know, um, in support of your advent along knitting these socks, I think I'm firstly going to have to make it admission and secondly going to have to uh, make a plan. I have to admit that I have not seen the Lord of the Rings movie. And so <laughs> that would be my admission. And I'm sure there are people gasping everywhere going, what? I don't know how I've missed that movie. But um, so now I think I will definitely watch it because then I think as you're rolling. Well, I'll watch it again though, with you because I've only seen it once. Okay. And believe me, I miss lots of it. Like I need to watch it again. I think it's one of those things. I know lots of people watch it over and over. So. Yeah, see, Sarah's already doing it. She's typed what with lots of question marks. And I'm sure it was more like a what? So anyway, I want to commit to watching it because then I think that at least when you're showing these socks month after month, then they will take on a new meaning for me as well. So yeah. I think I'm going so. to definitely watch the movie. Yes. Anyway, I'm going to say hi to Sophie. This is her first time or Wendy. She's, this is her first time joining. Hi, Wendy. And Wendy, oh, hi, Wendy. she may not want me to say this, but I know she just got back from a cruise with Arne and Carlos. Ah. <laughs> so. Okay, we now only, I'm reading the We only the have comments. a raft on our show. <laughs> we have a, a raft tour. Yeah, okay, I'm just reading these comments There's a now. There's other they're, people that haven't seen it. No, but they're saying, what? Somebody fell off a chair. Somebody's gasping. My goodness, okay, well, I know. Well, to be truthful, I didn't watch it until we went to New Zealand. And we That's were going right. to, we were going to um, Hobbiton. Hobbiton. And the kids said I had to watch it. So they actually made me watch it. Like in the nights that we were in our PMBs, I had to watch Lord of the Rings. So, oh, and Victoria just pointed anyway. out there are three movies plus The Hobbit. Yes, oh, there are. goodness. <laughs> That's I haven't watched movie. The Hobbit one yet, but yes, and they're long movies. And, you know, I pride myself on being a movie aficionado. I honestly, I, I do not watch like television, but the thing that I do watch are movies. And I have seen a lot of movies. Like, I feel like I have a pretty good handle, but these are, this is like a, um, a collection of movies that has somehow... And okay, I should probably take the same time to admit that I've also never watched the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> I've never watched the Harry Potter movies, but I read all the books to my kids. So, okay. But I've not watched the movies. Yeah, my kids read the yeah. books, but. So, when you right. really, really recommend the Arna Carlos crew. So, Kelly, we need to put that on the list. <laughs> okay, on the knitting bucket list. Yes. Okay. So, Very good. Okay. So, all right. Um, this, so I had no business casting on a sock yesterday, but I cast on a sock yesterday only because I have seen this sock and I wanted to cast this sock on. And I thought, well, what better time? And then in the spirit of stash busting, I found that I had a lone 50 gram skein of a beautiful yarn in my stash. Imagine that and decided to go with it. But because of the construction of the sock, I can't get a pair out of 50 grams. So I had to, um, uh, I had to get sneaky about this. However, I'll show you the sock and then I'll tell you all about the yarn. This is the shorty heel tab socks. <laughs> it's like oh, Noel new. Good. It looks that's amazing. Good. And okay, here's what I have to say about this. This may very well be the best fitting shorty sock I have ever tried on my foot. So, okay, now I have to cast this on before I go to bed. <laughs> I am in awe of this pattern. This is a free pattern on Ravelry, friends. And if you don't have this yet, you need this pattern in your life. Here are the reasons that it's super great. At first, I thought, oh, this is so cool. There's no ribbing. But no, what there is. Oh, it's okay. It's folded in. But look oh, at the cute. gorgeous yeah. way this finishes up. This is so lovely. And then you do short rows to create this oh, okay. really cool heel tab. Like tab. Okay. Yeah, a tab. So that when it's in, and I'm thinking this is more like we have all had hand knit socks that we love, but sometimes when I'm out doing like a longer walk, I think that I should be wearing my sports socks inside my runners because the hand knit socks don't really do the, the runners justice. Mm -hmm. These ones 
a short sock. These cannot slide down into your runners. This is a really deep pocket. It's also a short row heel, which okay. is nice and deep as well. And they look like they're a little bit chunky, but trust me, when they're on your oh, foot, okay. they are the perfect fit. And so then I knew that I was going to be a little bit short on the colorway. So I thought, hey, this would be a great time to throw in some fun stripes. And it already had this gorgeous little bit of like a honey gold in the yarn. So I added in a knit pick stroll in the colorway treasure. And I didn't want them to be just plain stripes. So I added in a couple of little shell repeats oh, that's cute. Yeah. only in the striping pattern. Stripe, yeah. So here's the yarn that I, the main yarn. This is so pretty. This is a ginger snap yarn and it's called dragonfly and it is uh, their zest fingering, which if you haven't used the zest fingering, you will want to. This is like a super plush, um, yeah. squishy sock yarn. It's a really beautiful sock yarn. And I just love this colorway. So I still have um, 27 grams left. So I will have enough to do the second sock, but I wouldn't have had enough. This does take up, you know, you're eating up some yarn here to do this little yeah. heel tab. But honestly, friends, this is such an amazing fit and it's a free pattern. So um, the pattern is on Ravelry. Um, and then there is, it will click you into her, I think it was a website, like a blog, a oh, blog right, okay. but she does have mm -hmm. on there and there's some really clever things about this pattern. She also has on there a clickable link where you can download the direct PDF. So since I like to use knit companion, this was perfect option for me. I dropped it right into knit companion. And then the other thing that she does with her pattern, which is super clever because there was one spot in here. I read it three times and I still couldn't quite figure out the instruction. And it was just on a, spe a very specific way to close up this little heel okay. gap that you would get. And I couldn't get it. But what she has all through her pattern is a series of QR codes. So all that you have to do for every little technique in the, in the sock pattern, if you had any questions, you just hold your phone over it. It pops up the little tutorial. So I think there's like eight or nine QR okay. codes in there for every step of this pattern. So this is setting you up for sock success right off the hop. I made the size medium. I have an eight and a half foot um, of medium width. So medium to narrow width. And this, this fits me, honestly, it's just such a great fit. I can't recommend this pattern enough and it's fast. Like I said, I cast this on yesterday and uh, I finished the toe this morning. So, well, that's so. like right now, that's all I want to wear is my shorty socks. I find it's too hot to have the, yeah, but so. this is such a good fit. Um, I'll get some pictures up of it uh, actually on a foot, not a, not a, not a plastic <laughs> not a blocker. Not a plastic blocker that's, you know, a quarter of an inch thick. So anyway, but it's a great pattern. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you were into um, shorty socks, this is a pattern you definitely want to try. Okay. Okay, so my next oh, is also a oh, pair of socks. Um, Tooth Fairy Pearl says that Ginger Snap is having a birthday sale starting on April 19th. So okay. there you go. You want to get yourself some zest fingering. Um, they also have lush fingering and I think the lush, the lush, it seems to me is just not quite as, as plump, but, um, this is a, it's a gorgeous yarn, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So my next one is also a pair of socks. So these are the, the New York DK socks by Nancy Wheeler. And I'll just pop a picture up here. Okay, so they've got like a, these are a DK sock. So I don't very often knit DK socks, but I had a skein and I thought, okay, well, I just need to do something different. So I love that cross hatching pattern that she has going mm -hmm. on. And I really like how it goes down. You've got like a little um, row of it that are a little like column of it that goes down the back of the sock too. So keep some interest there as well. Mm -hmm. So I've started mine. And mine are actually, they're, they're kind of in between like ankle socks and full length socks, but good for, for this time of year. So yeah. there's the, you can see the pattern on there. And then down the back, you've also got the one little cross hatch that goes down the back of the sock. Very nice. So I like that. this yarn is the Rico <laughs> DK sock yarn. I forget what it's called. I do have a remember? skein of that too, don't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Okay. Anyways, it will be it will be in the show notes, but this is this comes at 150 gram ball. 
Um, I know that I'm going to have lots left. I'll probably be able to do another pair. Um, yeah, but I like, I do like, I do like this and I like the feel of it. I just, I think they'll be good in my Birkenstocks, but I don't think that I'll be able to wear those in regular shoes. I still think for me, it feels too tight. And so it, like it's heel flap and gusset mm -hmm. and then your heel turn. And I think Nancy's pattern suggests, um, I did the medium size for stitches, but it suggests a 3.25. I like the fabric a little tighter, so I went down to a three mm -hmm. millimeter needle. And it's it's fine. I think when I put it on, this part would have been a bit tight going at my leg. So I thought, but at my ankle, it's perfect. Like it kind of fits the ankle perfectly. Okay, good. And I really wish I wish that I could remember what this was called. But it will be in the it'll be linked in the show notes. But and I'll I'll hopefully maybe have them finished by next week and then I'll remember <laughs> what it's called, but it is a, it is a, like a six ply. They also do this yarn in a, in a hundred gram ball that's in a four ply, but I know that the DK weight one actually comes in a 150 gram ball, which means that even if you're doing a pair of socks for a guy, you should have enough in a 150 gram ball. Yes. Yeah, so. absolutely. I'm yeah, with you on again, the DK socks. I like the concept of them. I like how fast they knit up, but yes, mm -hmm. I agree. It would be a struggle for me to get them into uh, footwear that I'm normally wearing, but yeah, Birkenstocks. Yeah. Perfect yeah. for that. Absolutely yeah. perfect. And since, since I've had my surgery, that's what I've been wearing a lot, just like in the house. And even when we go out a lot of times, I find that it's the most comfortable right at the moment because my feet are two different sizes. The one that's been done is good. The other one that's been done, that's not done needs help. So this, the Birkenstocks kind of are a one, well, not one size fit, but they are the easiest to get on and off right now. So good to have socks to go on with them good but. um okay so then the next thing that i actually pulled out and worked on again is this which i really like and so when i pulled it out i'm like kelly why haven't you worked on this this is the um scarf number four. Oh, the four okay i'll find it scarf number four by my favorite things and i I do have a picture of it, but honestly, like I think this <laughs> this will give you a clear enough idea. So I'm now past the midway point and I'm into the decrease side. It's not even a big scarf, but after I got almost to the halfway point, I'm like, okay, I've done this a lot of times. I didn't want to keep doing it. Now that one, it looks like that they've used something with a little bit of a mohair in it. Yeah. Um, and the one that I used is the Cashmere Reborn, which is from Gathering Yarns. And it's milled in Italy. So it's 95% recycled cashmere. I don't know how they recycle it or what they do to recycle it. But um, it's very cost effective when you are using something recycled. So this is where I'm at with the scarf. So I'm like past the halfway now. And oh, that looks good. It looks I love really the, I love good. this pitch it's pattern. Yeah. So soft. And it's. Honestly, it's not hard. But the thing is, I can't really. It looks like it'd be a great little travel project, but it's um, it's eight rows. And I cannot remember for the life of me because there's very small variations Changes, in yeah. the rows. And I can't remember the sequence I've tried and I have to keep looking back at the pattern. So it isn't something that is like completely mindless knitting that you can travel with or just, you know, I can't take it to the coffee shop because I'd have to have my iPad out and be sitting and looking at the pattern. But it's got such beautiful stitch definition. And this yarn is like beyond soft. It's so soft. And there's different times that I've thought, oh, if I only had this thing done, like I have quite a few things in my wardrobe that this would look really good with. And so I've committed to putting in some time. And now I'm on, the rows are getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. So I have so no did excuse. you wait? when you got halfway or did you just do it exactly as the pattern said? I did it exactly as the pattern Bottom. said. And I got um, to the center point plus about three or four rows on the first ball. I only have two balls of two this balls. Okay. okay, and they were 25 gram balls. So it is a 50 gram little scarf. If I, um, if Hilda I only London had where one, you got it, I got it in um, BC at the Chilliwack yarn store. store. But, but um, when I was there last time, I went in looking to see if they had more because I thought this would be gorgeous and like a, uh, like this is a taupey gray. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I thought uh, cream color would be really nice as well. Like just that beautiful soft thing in your wardrobe. They didn't have any more of it. 
So, so what, what brand is it? It's Gathering Yarns. Oh, Gathering. Okay. Now I know Country Yarns sells Gathering Yarns, but I know that she doesn't have this particular I don't think she one. Had that. I think I. So you could source it maybe. I and thought see... I saw it somewhere. Um, Stash Lounge. I think some of that, some of the more out West Canadian stores um, mm -hmm. tend to have some of the Gathering Yarn. Yeah. But it's so nice. This is such a beautiful yarn. And uh, it feels like, honestly, like a very luxurious yarn. And I don't have to say it's recycled cashmere. It's cashmere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. What else are you working on? Okay. So I am working on... <laughs> oh, Luana <laughs> just got the sock on. pattern. That's good, Luana. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. I am working on... The Riptide V-neck slip over by Jennifer Shields Toland. And I am doing it. And look at I did a swatch. It's a very small swatch, but it's a swatch. Yep. <laughs> so, so I actually did get gauge and I actually washed and blocked the swatch. So that's not I big enough to count your row gauge, though. You know, that's no, like a that's enough. a cheap swatch. This is I a know, real but swatch. I also just I also just did this. And it was the same, it's exactly the same. Yes. So, yes, I so here is where I am. It looks so good. So this is Coast held double. And this color is called River. And I've got, um, it's it's very similar to the Riptide slip over and your arm bands are done at the same time as you're doing the body of the mm -hmm. slip over. Mm -hmm. You do have to go back in after and pick up for the V-neck, but I did that and I've tried it on and it, it fits perfectly. So the V-neck, is all done. All I'm doing now is working on the body. I've got about two more inches to go. And then and then I have to decide whether I want to do a plain hem or a split hem. And I haven't decided yet. There will also be variations in this pattern where you can choose if you want to make it, if you're doing like a cropped and you want to make it come in at the sides, there will be like waist shaping in it if you choose to mm -hmm. do that. There's also the plain hem. There's also the instructions for the split hem. Um, the way this is right now, I could wear this just as a summer tee. I don't necessarily need to wear something underneath it, but I think I'm really going to like it with just a white t-shirt underneath it and a pair of jeans. And I think it's going to be nice and it's nice. Like this is, um, this is my second skein of, of Coast, my second 50 gram skein. I did use, I did go into the third skein for the neckband, but even holding it double, I won't even use three skeins of the Coast to do this whole no. project. So it's going to be released. I think the test, the deadline for the test, I think it's going to be released around May 1st. So, okay. Um, which is coming up. So definitely, definitely I've already got plans for another one of these too. You know, I'm going to do two of everything. Yes, of <laughs> course you are. The way it is. But definitely, definitely recommend. The pattern goes all the way down. Oops, let me cross with my yarn here. The, the pattern goes all the way down the back of the sweater too. Um, and then you've got this beautiful uh, broken rib detail that goes down each of the sides. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this Again, one definitely we, I'll, I'll we be able to wear in the summer. cannot stress how much, like what a beautifully written pattern this is mm -hmm. too, the Riptide. We've, we've each got one now. And uh, so that was my next work in progress too. And I, unlike Noel, I did a real swatch. Look at the size of that baby. Um, okay, I, I, did a real, I did a real garment. <laughs> Mine is on the needles. I have about three or four rows done on it, okay? <laughs> but um, I'm using, um, I'm not holding coast together for this one. I went deep stash diving again, all the way back to 2022. And I pulled out the drop soft tweed. Now this... The yarn that she that she talks about in her pattern is the five. It's plus make, right? And make or fiber and company. Noel, help me out. Uh, soft tweed. No. Oh. That she uses about? in the pattern. Oh, uh, the fiber, fiber oh, make make DK. Make DK, yes. And um, we both want to try that yarn actually, yeah. but we didn't have it available anywhere near us. So um, I decided to go stash diving for what I had. And I had quite a few skeins of this. And I've already made a sweater in um, a different colorway that I really, really like. And again, 
this, but in this color, honestly, the neps are so integrated in this color, you can barely see that there's neps at all, other than the little bit of white ones. So it's, there's a little bit like these orange and gray, but uh, I really like, really like this yarn. This is a little bit lighter than the, uh, the vest that I did, the round neck vest, uh, when I used the moon drake. That feels a little bit heavier than this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually am going down a needle size pattern calls for 3.75 and I'm getting uh, the gauge that I'm comfortable at on the 3.5. I think the pattern is for 22 stitches. I'm getting 21 stitches. Yes, yeah, I think the pattern is 22 stitches on a 3.75. But again, needle sizes, needle sizes are totally dependent on the knitter. So Mm -hmm. Like when you look at that on a pattern like that, the needle size that the pattern recommends, that is what that designer used to get that stitch gauge. That does not necessarily mean that that's the needle size. Even if you use the exact same yarn, does not mean that that's the needle size that you're going to need. So. Yes. And I actually posted this on Instagram the other day, because if you post something on Instagram, it makes it real, right? And I was joking about it saying, you know, I know that I should swatch for everything, but I don't swatch nearly enough. And um, things that you cannot use as an excuse are things like, well, the label says I'm going to get right. age if I use this needle, that does not count. Um, looking on Ravelry and 100 other people use the same yarn and theirs turned out fine. That also does not count saying your friend knit in it and it worked out fine, but you don't knit like your friend that doesn't count. So there's a whole host of reasons why you should be swatching. And I just need to listen to the little inner voice a little more frequently, but I am really happy with, with the swatch. And I know that I will be happy with the best and um, I can't wait to get going on it. Now that I've got um, sweater off the knee off the needles. I didn't want, I wanted to finish this, this uh, mid ocean tea before I got back into another sort of larger project, because I have a few of those stagnating too, but I want it to be able to devote time. Cause I know that the last time I knit the riptide, once I started, I didn't want to put it down. I just wanted yep. to go for it. So, yep. um, and yes, Haley, it is raspberry. It's raspberry. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's not quite showing up as pink on camera as it is um in person but it's very very pretty so yes okay, okay. what um, else we got okay so i am also working on the burmy basic 28 by beth mcdonald stone let me just bring up um so this is again a test knit that she's doing it she's doing the basic sweater in a whole bunch of different stitch gauges so this is the 28 that's the smallest stitch gauge that she's going to have but they're going to go from 12 up to 28 in increments of two so that any yarn that you have you should be able to fit into one of these patterns it is a um a top down yoked sweater and so i am doing mine in holstein coast <laughs> held single this time we really and get stuck in um we go in waves, don't we? <laughs> we find yes. something and we're like, okay, we're all about this. That so looks this is, so good. So this is good. what I have so far. So this is, um, I, I wanted to kind of do a stripe, but I, I picked out my colors. So I'll show you the colors first. So I had this cone. So this cone is called Dub. And I bought a couple of cones of kind of neutralies because I wanted to do some neutral sweaters. I don't want to knit neutral sweaters. I don't know what I bought. I don't know what I bought. Like, neutral colors for but anyway so i thought okay i need to start using up some of this so originally i was going to do it in this with just a few little colors in it but then i like the color so much i thought no i want it to be just like a stripe with all of the well colors. that's funny that you say that though because just yesterday i was thinking you know what i really want to do a sweater like in sort of that creamy very light color for summer when i actually have a bit of color so maybe when you're done with that maybe i'll buy the rest of that cone sure. off of you since you you'll never it. knit with that color again <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the colors that are in it, this is amber, this color I used in a, um, oh, what's the Caitlin Hunter one that has 10, Tanya, in a Tanya, and I only used like 2.05 ball, so I had this whole amount of that cake left, so that is amber, this color is another blue, but a really pretty blue, this is called sapphire, this is the plum that I used up at the top of this sweater, mm -hmm. and then this color is called honeydew. Very nice. 
So I just kind of picked those out because I ha I was going to do a lot of color work with Coast or things with it. I think I bought the neutrals because I was going to do striped sweaters, but just never got around to it. So I had found um, on the, uh, well, no, just on the internet, I had found a stripe sequence generator. So that's what I did. So that's where I came up with. You can see the little part that's got just the rectangle there with the stripes in it. I will link it again. I linked it um, two weeks ago, but I will link it again. They've got like a block of colors. So you can kind of pick out colors that are closest to you. Then you can put into it. Do you want two row stripes, three row stripes, four rows? And you can have like a variation of stripes. They all don't have to be the same width. Mm -hmm. So you put that in. And then so I just kept going through the random stripe generator until I got a sequence that I liked the look of. And I liked this one. So I um, took a screenshot and saved that just into my photos. So down underneath, you can't see it, that printing so small, but it actually does give you the number of rows too. But those were kind of a little bit not big enough rows for what I wanted for this because I wanted the, the blocks of color to show. So I just added two rows to every stripe. So I think I've got seven row stripes, six row stripes. So the six rows, they turned into eight, the seven rows, they turned into nine and the three rows, they turned into four or five or something like that. So I have to keep it straight going through. And once I get to the bottom of the stripes, I'll just go back and repeat. So I really like how it's turning out. It and like great. I said, with that that generator, you can just keep going back and hit generate till you get a sequence or stripe pattern. That you like, that you like. Yeah. yeah. So it started off here. You can see I've got the blue around the neck and then it goes into the dove color and then into the blue. There is more of the cream color once I get below this. And then there's only every once in a while is going to be this kind of this round of the honeydew. And I think that I am going to do it like um, just kind of the, like, like the length of sleeves that this is. And I okay. think it'll be a really cute summer top. I think so, so. too. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's fun. So, yeah. So I just got to get, you know, just got to just need more time. <laughs> just got it. But it is fun. And, you know, like I always say that I don't want to do um, all that stocking stitch. But when you're actually changing colors, it makes it go a lot faster. And the changing colors, I'm using the uh, the method that Patty Lyons does. Mm -hmm. So my my color changes are right, right down here. So I think it looks pretty good. You can't really see. Yeah, it looks great. Where really the good. color changes are. So, so I am, but I am. And then obviously, it means I'm going to have ends to sew in because. Yeah, I could hold it before and after, but I kind of like to just. I kind of like when you've changed colors just to like thread it through like just one of the strands of that so that it doesn't actually show underneath the garment. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the, the stripe generator is a, is a website and I will link it in the, I will link it in the um, show notes again. Yeah. And Nicole says that she's using the stripe sequence generator for the baby flax that she's working on. Okay. She said it's working cool. great. Yep. Yes. Yep. So <clears throat> yeah. So it was fun. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, Klaska has confirmed that Stash Lounge does indeed carry gathering yarns. Okay. I don't know. Um, do they have the cashmere as well, Klaska? I don't know if, if you knew that answer, but they do have gathering yarns. And Eileen was wondering, how does she find that sock pattern on Ravelry? So Eileen, you just have to type in the name of the pattern. Um, when you go into Ravelry up on the very top, there's a pattern search. You know what? Can I just one moment? Maybe I can do something to help you out. Let me just share that screen that I've got going on behind here. <clears throat> Okay, there we go. So when you open up your Ravelry page, um, and this is mine, all that you will do, and I'll sh I will go onto that page. If you go up here where it says patterns, you can click on that, and then you just type the name in. What was the exact name of it again, Noel? Do you well, remember? Shorty heel tab socks. Shorty heel tab socks. Hit enter. And this is the pattern right here. It's this first one. So you can just click on that. And then that will show you. It says uh, when you're reading down into the pattern, it shows here that it is available for free. 
So you can uh, just click on that and it will show you how you get into, into that pattern. And then you can add it to your library over here um, or print it off, whatever it is that you need to do with that to, uh, to make that. So, okay. Okay. Do you have another whip? Um, no, because I showed my socks earlier okay. that I worked on. I didn't get a lot done on the second sock. I cast it on and uh, I don't know, didn't get as much done on as I wanted to. But I, I did, I will admit, having to knit this one on two 16-inch circulars because all of my little nine inches are occupied. So on. <laughs> that's not good. That means... I need to finish off some pairs of socks this week. Um, that and my vest, and those are my knitting plans for the week. Okay. So. Okay, so my last whip that I'm working on is the Lauder V-neck by Rebecca Klo. And let me just bring up a picture here. Okay, so this is the, this is the pattern that she just released a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the pattern, the pattern is great. It, it has a V-neck cardigan, a round neck cardigan, a V-neck pullover, a round neck pullover, a V-neck vest, and a round neck vest, all in the same pattern. So I am doing the V-neck cardigan. So I ordered some yarn from Wool Warehouse, and this is uh, a yarn that I have, or a color that I've wanted to use for a long time. So this is the color. The color is called Cobalt. And this yarn is Daisy. It's Drops Daisy. And this is 100% non-superwash merino. And it's a DK weight. So I've started the cardigan. And, and I got to all... see this yesterday at her house. And let me tell you, this yarn feels amazing. Amazing. So I've got... It looks so good. The back down to the split. So it's like... It's like a cable, a cable and a braid, right? But it's actually, it's actually really easy to keep track of where you are in the pattern. And I love how she's integrated like the cable down here. Um, you can see down there, like kind of this is like your shoulder and then it comes around into the, the back of the sweater. And then I just picked up, so you do this first and then I just picked up st stitches here and I'm working down the front. So that'll kind of sit like that. It's and a then great I'm just pattern. doing the I'm just doing the increases along here for the V-neck in the front. And then soon I have to do some armhole shaping and then you cast on in the other side. I'll be glad when I've got it all together because then the rows will be longer and I'll feel like I'm did not you, switching around. Are you doing a part. cardigan, did you say, or a pullover? Yes, cardigan. Okay. Yeah. So even the even the inside pattern looks. So good. good. But anyway, Looks I'm really good. enjoying, really, really enjoying the cables. I love this color. I can see doing the pullover version of this or the vest. I think it'd be stunning in a vest version of it. Um, yeah, I just don't know what else to say about it. I like, I really I am enjoying knitting the cables. This yarn is super easy to work with as far as doing cables without using a cable needle. So that's an advantage. I find my Lord of the Rings socks, I have to use a cable needle because the stitches are just too small. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, so this is the second of Rebecca's patterns that I've knit. And the first was the Tolsta Tea, and I found it was a very well written pattern as well. And this it was kind of different because in my size, when you go across here and you're kind of doing your shoulder, and then, and then actually where you get to where the sleeves are going to go on, you kind of decrease. Some sizes increase, some sizes stay the same. I don't know okay. how it's going to work, but I'm just following. The pattern because you had a lot of blindly testers, following with following faith yes the pattern yes. i'm just going to do what the pattern says but yeah i'm i'm looking forward to working on that and i really do love the feel of this yarn and working with it so so i might have another sweater quantity coming <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> i might i might so is that a segue into what did you buy this week well i didn't get it yet this is actually, this is a, the, the, the stuff that I have coming is actually a gift from, because I, um, just, just a, a nice gift from my daughter-in-law. So very good. Anyway, did you get anything this week? I did. I went to Little Red Mitten and I hadn't been there. I had not been there since like way before Christmas. 
because of my foot surgery. It was actually the first time that I'd been to London, even to just like stay overnight with Jacqueline and for us to do like a, a girl shopping trip, like her and I and Zoe went out and had a girl shopping day on Saturday. And it was nice. It was really nice. Yeah. So on my way in on Friday, I stopped at Little Red Mitten and then I actually went back for the knit night, which was nice. Um, and I just was looking at all the, they do carry, uh, they do carry whole scar and super soft and they carry Titicaca and they carry the Lucia. So they had this, this Titicaca and I just, I just, the variation and the color in this yarn this color was just so beautiful i just thought i don't know what i'm going to do with it but i'm going to do something with it and this is this color is called camellia and it's like a a berry i don't know i, I think it might match up with this color that that kelly's got we'll just trade kelly we'll trade the cream color yarn for the yeah i think it will hold that back up yeah yeah i think i think so. it'll look really good together yeah so yeah, you're welcome. So we'll just, you'll just trade. You can have the dove. <laughs> because well, you the, won't the, be the cones. I've knit one sweater out of this already. You won't be able to do any too much damage holding it with something else no. for a second sweater. It'll come no. back to me, I'm sure. So I'm not that worried about it. So, yeah. So just the color was just so pretty. And I believe in, on the website, I believe that it says, the color that it goes with, I believe, is called raspberry in the coast, I think. And it used to go with a color called red clover, which they don't carry anymore. And on their swatches samples, that's the color I like the best. I think that one is And this is red, red current. Red current. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe they replaced, replaced red clover with red current. I don't know. I don't know. I thought red current was a discontinued color, too. I'm not sure. Anyway. But anyway. I think it'll look yeah. good. So I think it'll look good with that. I just, just the color was just, and you know, it's, it's like we say, we do oftentimes order off the, the whole website, but it's not the same as seeing the colors in person. Like no, really I think not, it, and, because it gives you a little bit more freedom to play when yeah. you've got all of the colors in front of you. So it is nice to go to a store that you can see all the colors. But it's even when you look at something like this, like some, so many of their colors have so much variation in them that you don't really see on the website in just that little tiny picture. But when you see the actual yarn in person, mm -hmm. like even some of their, their super softs are so um, heathered, like with so much color in it and you just, it doesn't do it justice like your picture on yeah. the, um, so. Judy's asking what color I just held up. This is red current, red Judy, current. and you can see like how heathered, yep. oops with that focus there you can see how heathered that is too right it's there's a lot of uh I'm sure i'm showing you the messy side of it there there's a lot of uh variation in there mm -hmm. it's really a nice color and um i'm trying to think do i oh, making a mess back here but that's okay ah so this is um the titty caca that they suggested as the perfect pairing and when I got it, I thought, I don't know about that, but it, it blends together so well. And this is the one that I made my uh, Kutar tea out of. So mm -hmm. I was really happy with that one. So the, the color that Kelly just held up is the red current. I know, like, I really like that red current color. I did have three cakes of it, but I did the, um, the S the Co European road trip shawl which if you want to do like a, a more cost effective version of that shawl coast is the way to go because the original yarn is like a cardiff cashmere silk that's like quite expensive and it is it is a wonderful perfect summer shawl mm -hmm. like it gives mm -hmm. you kind of just enough warmth i know even when we're on the train and it's a little cool you can just wrap it around your shoulders and so there are a lot of projects that you can make with the coast yarn and it is like really cost effective and i think it's pretty versatile when it's easy to use at two strands together. Um, at one strand together, it, it will. Someone had asked earlier if it would make a nice summer garment, and it, it will. But at one strand, like you're knitting it at like 28 stitches. So it is, yes. you know, it's a lot of knitting when you're doing it just at a single strand. But you do get a beautiful fabric and a beautiful garment. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they do have a lot of other, like they've got the, the um, Titicaca. They've now got the Lutzia that you can hold it with. And there's a lot of other companies that have silk mohairs that blend with the colors mm -hmm. too. So there's mm -hmm. a lot that you can do with it, holding it with another yarn that gets your gauge up a bit that it's not so tedious to knit. Yes, so. for sure. Um, okay. 
<clears throat> Klaska has come back. Thank you, Klaska, and said yes. Oh, I do. Okay. Um, what was the name of the store again? Smash? No. Stash. Sma Stash, Stash Lounge. It's called Stash, Stash Lounge. Stash Lounge. So Lounge. they do yeah. carry the cashmere if you're interested. And I flagged another one because um, Heather says Small oh, Bird okay. Workshop has also the gathering cashmere and it's on sale. She said, unfortunately they don't oh, have the cream great. color. Okay. So that's not going to help me out at all, but it may help you because they did have a few very beautiful colors. I think there was a really, um, if I'm remembering it right, there was a really gorgeous kind of very pale sagey green. Uh, I thought that was a really nice one too. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. So the only other thing it wasn't, it was last week, but we, didn't get into it last week. The only other thing that I bought recently is the Nora Gone um, cable source book. And I actually was just on Amazon one day, you know, looking for who knows what. And it just, I was, it just popped up. The Kindle edition was $3 that day. So for $3, I'm like, okay, I, I have to get it. So I've kind of been looking through it and there's some amazing stitch patterns in it. Like if you wanted to use them in socks, if you wanted to do it, it would be a perfect place where you could take one of best sweaters and put like a cable design up the front or mm -hmm, you know, maybe mm -hmm. something under here. And what's really cool about the book and what she does in the book is what she gives you is a an SSE rating on every cable pattern. And SSE is stocking stitch equivalent. So if you were going to like, let's say, um, you are going to put in a cable here. So she tells you, okay, it might be 14 stitches in your cable pattern, but that's equivalent to 10 stitches of stocking stitch. So if you were putting it in somewhere, you would have to adjust your stitch count in order to accommodate that cable. But I thought that's perfect, even if you wanted to put it in a sock. And, you know, the, the cable pattern itself was like, for instance, like when I'm doing, when I'm doing this sock, obviously I've got a bigger overall stitch gauge for the sock pattern than what I would if I'm just doing a stocking stitch. But she would have that for this particular pattern, she would tell you what the stocking stitch equivalent was. So it makes and it I have a lot never seen easier. that anywhere else. So when you told me that I thought that is absolutely amazing. What yep. what a, a great resource uh, tool yep. that is to have at your hands, for sure. Yep. So this is her cable source book. Um, there is a Kindle edition. There is obviously there is a book edition too. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed looking through it. I haven't used anything from it yet, but I have really enjoyed looking through it and seeing all the different the different cables. And of course, there's ones that are just like small ones. There's ones that are like she does. Norgon does gorgeous key, um, all over cabled garments. And yeah, so and I I I don't know. Cabling's just been the thing right now. I just really want to cable everything. <laughs> so. The book is the, the, I will link it, but I'm pretty sure it's called the cable source book, Noragon's cable source book. But if that's wrong, I will have the correct one in the show notes. Okay. So, okay. So did you get anything this week? No. No. No, I'm thinking about that, but no, no, I did not. No, I didn't. I so. was very well behaved. I'm, I am uh, getting myself lined up to uh, do some damage at Knit City. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. yeah and it seems like everything that I've wanted to knit lately I actually had the yarn for mm -hmm. there hasn't been something where I thought oh I have to go outside of stash so I've been uh, um, Penny PJ Knits she calls it the PYS it's Penny's yeah, Yarn Shop local. yeah <laughs> yeah so I've been shopping at the KYS and uh, let, me, let me tell you, there's a pretty good selection of yarns in that store. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't had to. I know that I ordered the yarn, the, this yarn, but I have very limited DK. And well, that is lot. one thing. I don't have a lot of DK no, either. Not a lot in sweater quantities. Like, mm -mm. so that is, that is one thing that I might be looking at. The bulk of my knitting that I have done in a DK, it has been something where I have created yep. a DK like, holding like a titty. Yeah. This like holding a titty together. together with yep. a super soft or um, a coast with a titty caca. I'm creating DKs. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the most part, the types of knits I've done that that will work for, but you know, like I had to buy, I had to buy this yarn in a mm -hmm. DK weight. That's just something that I don't have a lot of. And if I'm being honest, 
sometimes I find it can be pricey for a DK because all of a sudden I think all, you know, we're going from a fingering weight that we have a, a dollar value expectation for. And then the DK, the yardage is so much less than that, yeah. but yet the price stays pretty much the same. So in my mind, I always think, oh, I'm getting better value for my fingering weight. And I realize you need less if it's a DK weight, but somehow I just, I don't know. My mind doesn't work that way. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, Lauren, so Lauren says, says that. Yeah. And that's what it was the day after I bought mine too. I don't know how I lucked out. And I, cause then I thought when I saw that the next day, I thought, well, did I buy it for three something? So I had to go back in and look and yes, I did. <laughs> so anyway. Maybe you got the, the uh, hacked Amazon site or something that came up, but if know. you got it, you got it. Know. It's good. I got it. So, so. okay. Okay. So, um, we'll just quickly just say what knit lungs we've got going on. We won't go yep. into too much detail because nothing, nothing is due before next week, but we have our year long sock make along. So just as you, as you knit your socks, enter them in there, we do two prizes every month. We go back to the beginning of the year to draw for them. So the more socks you get entered in there, the more chances you have to win. We have a pattern prize donated by Natalie. Um, and Natalie Sheldon does amazing sock designs. And we also have a sock yarn prize every month. And Kelly, do you want to talk about the Advent Along? So the Advent Along is just meant to take off some of that December pressure. Um, take a project of your choosing, divide it up into 12 equal parts, knit a part each month. And then uh, we are drawing a prize. There's a chatter thread that is open on Ravelry that you can chat away put a picture in there and we are drawing a quarterly prize from the chatter but we will open the finished object thread in december for your advent project and then we will do a uh, winner in december as well okay and then we've also just started as of april 1st our smash that stash make along so you should use yarn that's in your stash and what when did we say that it had to be before april 1st April 1st. Okay, so yarn that was in your stash before April 1st. So nothing new that you buy in this time frame. Um, at least 50 grams of yarn. And you can enter that and we will have um, a giveaway for that at the end of June. So so we call it smash that stash. We can all also look at it like spring cleaning your yarn stash. <laughs> so. That's right. And I'm not eligible to win anything, but I am smashing the heck out of my stash because everything I've been reaching for lately has been directly from, and some of it deep stash, deep stash. But yeah. uh, anyway, I'm happy to, happy to be doing that too. It feels good. It even, feels you know, good. when I get well, 50. The only, like the only thing that was new that I'm knitting with is this. Yeah. Even if I can get oh. a 50 gram ball out of stash somehow, it just gives me like the biggest feeling of satisfaction. Yep. So, so, yep. Yes, okay, Haley, so it's okay to put January, February, and March socks in April. If yes, you didn't get them sure. in, as long as you haven't entered them already, you can certainly um, enter them again. Or, yep. sorry, not again, but enter them now. Enter them now, um, yeah. Yes. Yep. Just yep. socks that were knit in 2024. Yes, absolutely. So. Okay. Um, just before we go, we should go back to saying this too. Uh, uh, if you are looking to reach out to us for any mm -hmm. reason, if you have questions or um if you've won a prize and you need to reach out to us, this is the best place to find us um, uh, at this Gmail, knits and pieces podcast at Gmail. This gets checked regularly. So, the, you know, other messages that you send, I love to hear from you um, mm -hmm. on Instagram or on Ravelry, but I'm, I may not get to that right away. So the Gmail is absolutely the best place to find us. Uh -huh. And then um, on Instagram, down below here at the bottom of the screen are our names that we are on Instagram. I'm the Tangled Stitch. Noel is Noel's Knits and Pieces. I'm probably my most socially active on Instagram. So uh, that's where I'm posting lots of photos of things that I'm working on throughout the week. And I know that Noel is doing that as well. So if you want to reach out to me there, that's fine too. And follow along on our fibery little journeys and see what we're up to. So yeah. Yeah. And again, we want to thank everybody for your support in the breast cancer fundraiser. And we thank we want to thank you again for joining us week after week. And again, to everybody that watches us after that, um, we really appreciate all the all the comments and just the whole the whole wonderful 
group atmosphere that we get from community. Here. Just, yes. Yeah, it's wonderful. So we know that um, you have a lot of options to watch. There is a mm -hmm. lot of knitting podcasts out there now, a lot of making podcasts, and we know you have a lot of options. So it uh, thrills us beyond imagination right. that right. you choose to watch ours. Yeah. So we hope that everybody has an amazing week and we will see you here in the Knit Chat Cafe next week. Happy knitting. <laughs>